Hey guys, it's Mrs. Brewer, and today we are going to be finishing up chapter 21 of The Lightning Thief. We're almost to the end. When we left off yesterday, we were to the point that um, he had Percy had been in the throne room on Olympus with Zeus and Poseidon, and Zeus had just left to go purify his master bolt. So let's see what's going to happen next. Here we go. Thunder shook the palace. With a blinding flash of lightning, Zeus was gone. I was in the throne room, alone, with my father. <sighs> Your uncle, Poseidon said, has always had a flair for the dramatic exits. I think he would have done well as the god of theater. An uncomfortable silence. Sir, I said, what was in the pit? Poseidon regarded me. Have you not guessed? Kronos, I said, the king of the Titans. Even in the throne room of Olympus, far away from Tartarus, the name Kronos darkened the room, made the hearth fire seem not quite so warm on my back. Poseidon gripped his trident. In the first war, Percy, Zeus cut our father Kronos into a thousand pieces, just as Kronos had done to his own father Uranus. Zeus cast Kronos's remains into the darkest pit of Tartarus. The Titan army was scattered, their mountain forces on Etna destroyed, and their monstrous allies driven to the farthest corners of the earth. And yet, Titans cannot die any more than we gods can. Whatever is left of Kronos is still alive in some hideous way, still conscious in his eternal pain, still hungering for power. He's healing, I said. He's coming back. Poseidon shook his head. From time to time, over the eons, Kronos is stirred. He enters men's nightmares and breathes evil thoughts. He wakens restless monsters from the depths. But to suggest that he could rise from the pit, well, that's another thing. That's what he intends, Father. That's what he said. Poseidon was silent for a long time. Lord Zeus has closed discussion on this matter. He will not talk or allow talk of Kronos. You have completed your quest, child. That is all you need to do. But... I stopped myself. Arguing would do no good. It would very possibly anger the only God I had on my side. As, ooh, as you wish, Father. A faint smile played on his lips. Obedience does not come naturally to you, does it? No. No, sir. I must take some blame for that, I suppose. The seed is not like to be restrained. He rose to his full height and took up his trident. Then he shimmered and became the size of a regular man standing directly in front of me. You must go, child. But first, know that your mother has been returned. I stared at him, completely stunned. My mother? You will find her at home. Hades sent her when you recovered his helm. Even the Lord of Death repays his debts. My heart was pounding. I couldn't believe it. Do you, would you? I wanted to ask Poseidon if he would come with me to see her. But then I realized that that was really ridiculous. I imagined loading up the God of the Sea into a taxi and taking him to the Upper East Side. If he'd wanted to see my mom all those years, he would have. And then, well, there was smelly game to think about. Poseidon's eyes took on a little sadness. When you return home, Percy, you must make an important choice. You will find a package waiting for you in your room. A package? You will understand when you see it. No one can choose your path, Percy. You must decide. I nodded, although I had no idea what he was really talking about. Your mother is a queen among women, Poseidon said wistfully. I had not met such a mortal woman in a thousand years. Still, I'm sorry you were born, child. I have brought you a hero's fate, 
And a hero's fate is never happy. It is never anything but tragic. I tried not to feel hurt. Here is my own dad telling me he was sorry that I'd been born. I don't mind, Father. Not yet, perhaps. Not yet. But it was an unforgivable mistake on my part. I'll leave you then. I bowed awkwardly. I, I won't bother you again. I was five steps away when he called Perseus. I turned. There was a different light in his eyes, a fiery kind of pride. You did well, Perseus. Do not misunderstand me. Whatever else you do, know that you are mine. You are a true son of the sea god. As I walked back through the city of the gods, conversations stopped. The muses paused their concert. People and satyrs and naiads all turned towards me, their faces filled with respect and gratitude. And as I passed, they knelt like I was some sort of hero. Fifteen minutes later, still in a trance, I was back in the streets of Manhattan. I caught a taxi to my mom's apartment, rang the doorbell, and there she was. My beautiful mother, smelling of peppermint and licorice, the weary and worry evaporating from her face as soon as she saw me. Percy, oh my goodness. Oh, oh my baby. She crushed the air right out of me. We stood in the hallway as she cried and ran her, ran her hands through my hair. Okay, I'll admit it. My eyes were a little misty too. I was shaking because, you know, I was so relieved to see her. She told me she'd just appeared at the apartment that morning, scaring Gabe half out of his wits. She didn't remember anything since the Minotaur and couldn't believe it when Gabe told her I was a wanted criminal traveling across the, mon or across the country blowing up national monuments. She'd been going out of her mind with worry all day because she hadn't heard the news. Gabe had forced her to go into work, saying she had a month and a half salary to make up. She better get started right now. I swallowed back my anger and told her my own story. I tried to make it sound less scary than it had been, but that wasn't easy. I was just getting to the fight with Ares when Gabe's voice interrupted the living room, from the living room. Sorry, that me off done yet or what? She closed her eyes. He isn't going to be happy to see you, Percy. The store got half a million phone calls today from Los Angeles. Something about free appliances? Oh, yeah. Uh, about that. She managed a weak smile. Please don't make him any angrier, okay? Come on. In the month that we'd been gone, the apartment had turned into Gabe land. Garbage was ankle deep. On the carpet. The sofa had been reupholstered in soda cans. Dirty socks and underwear, nasty, hung off the lampshades. Gabe and his three big goony friends were playing poker at the table. When Gabe saw me, his cigar dropped out of his mouth. His face got redder than lava. You got the nerve to come here, little punk. I got the police. He's not a fugitive after all, my mom interjected. Isn't that wonderful, Gabe? Gabe looked back and forth between us. He didn't seem to think my homecoming was so wonderful. Bad enough I had to give back your life insurance, he said. Give me the phone and call the cops. Gabe, no. He raised his eyebrows. Did you, say, did you just say no? You still think I'm going to put up with this punk again? I can still press charges on him for wrecking my Camaro. But... He raised his hand, and my mother flinched. For the first time, I realized something. Gabe had hit my mom. I didn't know when or how much, but I was sure he'd done it. Maybe it had been going on for years when I wasn't around. A balloon of anger started expanding in my chest. I came towards Gabe, instinctively taking my pen out of my pocket. He just laughed. <laughs> What, punk? You gonna write on me? You one you touch me and you're going to jail forever, you understand? Hey, Gabe. His friend Eddie interrupted. He's just a kid. 
Gabe looked at him resentfully and mimicked, Just a kid. His other friends laughed like idiots. I'll be nice to you, punk. Gabe showed me his tobacco-stained teeth. I'll give you five minutes to get your stuff and get out. After that, I'm calling the cops. Gabe! My mom pleaded. He ran away. Gabe said, let him stay on. I was itching to uncap Riptide. But even if I did, the blade wouldn't hurt humans. And Gabe, even by the loosest definition, was completely human. My mother took my arm. Please, Percy, come on. We'll go to your room. I let her pull me away, my hands still shaking with rage. My room had been completely filled with Gabe's junk. There were stacks of used car batteries, a rotting bouquet of sympathy flowers with a card from somebody who'd seen his Barbara Walters interview. Gabe is just upset, honey, my mom said. I'll talk to him later. I'm sure it'll work out. Mom, it'll never work out. Not as long as Gabe is here. She wrung her hands nervously. I can. I'll take you to work with me for the rest of the summer and the fall. Maybe there's another boarding school. Mom. She lowered her eyes. Trying, Percy. I just... I need some time. A package appeared on my bed. At least, I could have sworn it wasn't there a minute ago. It was a battered cardboard box, about the right size to fit a basketball. The address on the mailing slip was in my own handwriting. The Gods, Mount Olympus, 600th floor, Empire State Building, New York, New York. With best wishes, Percy Jackson. Hmm, do you remember what's in this box? I think I do. Over the top, in black marker, in a man's clear, bold print, was the address of our apartment with the words, Return to Cinder. Suddenly, I understood what Poseidon had told me on Olympus. A package. A decision. Whatever else you do, know that you are mine. You are a true son of the sea god. I looked at my mom. Mom, do you want Gabe gone? Percy, it isn't that simple. Mom, just tell me. That jerk's been hitting you. Do you want him gone or not? She hesitated and then nodded, almost imperceptibly. Yes, Percy, I do. And I'm trying to give up my courage to tell him, but you can't do this for me. You can't solve my problems. I looked at the box, but I could solve her problem. I wanted to slice that package open, plop it right down on the poker table and take out what was inside. I could start my very own statue garden right there in the living room. That's what a Greek hero would do in the stories, I thought. That's what Gabe deserves. But a hero's story always ended in tragedy. Poseidon had told me that. I remembered the underworld. I thought about Gabe's spirit drifting forever in the fields of Asphodel, or condemned to some hideous torture behind barbed wire fields of punishment. An eternal poker game, sitting up to his waist in boiling, boiling oil, listening to opera music. Did I have the right to send someone there? Even Gabe? A month ago, I wouldn't hesitated. But now? I can do it, I told my mom. One look inside this box, he'll never bother you again. She glanced at the package and seemed to understand immediately. No, Percy, she said, stepping away. You can't. Poseidon called you a queen, I told her. He said he hadn't met a woman like you in a thousand years. Her cheeks flushed. Percy, you deserve better than this, Mom. You should go to college. Get your degree. You can write your novel. Meet a nice guy, maybe. Live in a nice house. You don't need to protect me anymore by staying with Gabe. Let me get rid of him. She wiped a tear off her cheek. Sound. You sound so much like your father, she said. He offered to stop the tide for me once. He offered to build me a palace at the bottom of the sea. He thought he could solve all my problems with a wave of his hand. What's wrong with that? Her multicolored eyes seemed to search me. I think you know, Percy. 
I think you're enough like me to understand that if my life is going to mean anything, then I have to live it myself. I can't let a God take care of me or my son. I have to find the courage on my own. Your quest is reminding me of that. We listen to the sound of poker chips and swearing and ESPN coming from the living room TV. I'll leave the box, I said. If he threatens you, she looked pale, but she nodded. Where will you go, Percy? Half Blood Hill. For the summer or forever? Well, I guess that depends. We locked eyes and I sensed that we had an agreement. We would see how things stood at the end of the summer. She kissed my forehead. You'll be a hero, Percy. You'll be the greatest of all. I took one last look around my bedroom. I had a feeling I'd never see it again. And then I walked with my mother to the front door. Leave so soon, punk! Gabe called after me. Good riddance! I had one last twinge of doubt. How could I turn down the perfect chance to take revenge on him? I was leaving here without saving my mother. Hey, Sally, what about that meatloaf, huh? A steely look of anger flared in my mother's eyes. And I thought, just maybe I was leaving her in good hands after all, her own. That meatloaf surprise is coming right up, dear. She told Gabe, meat love surprise. She looked at me and winked. The last thing I saw as the door swung closed was my mother staring at Gabe as if she were contemplating how he'd look as a garden statue. And that is the end of chapter 22. Tomorrow we will start, or chapter 21. Tomorrow we'll start chapter 22, which is called the prophecy comes true. Come back tomorrow to hear more. Bye, guys.